Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 88. Been gone a little bit, sorry about that. But we're back and yakking again. Lots of things have been going on, lots of things happening, new things happening. We'll get you all up to date. Well, hello everybody. Uh, sorry we haven't been uh, doing episodes in a while. We've been just busy. Oh my God, just busy, busy, busy. So we're kind of going to go back here a little bit and kind of um, go through some of the things that we've done. And if you've been watching our videos, you'll uh, probably notice that we went up to Washington and we talked about that in the last episode. But man, uh, that was a busy schedule. So we had 10 days to accomplish a lot. And uh, probably the dumbest thing I need to talk about and, uh, and remind other drivers is on the very last day, we were getting a little homesick and we actually drove 22 hours straight. And uh, we made it safely and stuff. But I got to tell you, maybe, I mean, maybe it's easier for someone that's younger, but um, that is just ridiculous. Uh, I don't think I'll try to do that ever again. Um, yes, it was nice because we got home early for Father's Day and we're able to spend the, uh, a nice brunch with our, uh, our daughter and her kids uh, the following day because we did get home one day earlier. So that was cool, but I don't know. Uh, I think it would have been worse news if my kids found out that we got in a car accident. So anyway, so the trip, uh, we basically took uh, the RV from Arizona up to Washington State to become Sunbirds. And uh, so we took uh, three, about four days actually to get up to Washington and the Anacortes area. And we stayed at a place called Fidalgo Bay RV Resort, which uh, we really like that place. It's a nice place. It's right on the water. And uh, uh, it was kind of interesting because they had one of those uh, uh, Teton kind of group uh, get-togethers going on there. And boy, they had some, some machines there, I'm telling you. Not only did they have Tetons there, but they typically most of the people were pulling them with... Uh, uh, Mack trucks, <laughs> I guess that's what you call them. And so we got tons of these Mack trucks, and it was uh, um, interesting. I get into a point, it's like, do you have to have one of those to pull a Teton? Because they are kind of monstrous. But anyway, it, it was kind of neat. And um, but I didn't spend a whole lot of time. I didn't get a chance to talk to those people. But we did get about two days to relax at uh, uh, Fidelgo Bay before we rented a. Uh, trailer went to our storage unit we have up there and filled it and all it was is one of those u-haul trailers not a truck and so we took kind of all the uh, main things we wanted for the house like uh, photo albums and and some special things that we had that we knew that someday we'd be buying a house and so we um, kind of loaded that kind of stuff on the trailer and then uh, the following day, we took the RV to the storage unit uh, area, which we rented a new place there, and uh, put it in storage there and winterized our RV, even though it was June. <laughs> it felt kind of funny winterizing. And uh, we got a little stressed out on that because it turns out we parked it in the wrong spot. And so the person that found out we parked in a spot was a jerk and kind of made our lives miserable but uh because by the time we found that out we were like 500 miles away and uh anyway it was a mistake and so it, it was a little stressful but uh anyway we got over that part and uh so yeah so uh we drove back with the trailer and then just used motels and uh on the way back and then uh, visited with sherry's folks a little bit and then after that, we, from Oregon, we kind of got up at like 3 o'clock in the morning and started heading towards uh, the Nevada area. 
And uh, we got there kind of earlier than we expected. And so we decided, well, let's keep driving. And so we canceled the hotel that, well, motel we had at uh, uh, Tornapah, Nevada, and kept driving. And so we just like, all right, let's go for it. I'm getting a little homesick. We'll get home about 1.30 at night. And uh, that's about when we hit home. And man, I mean, that last two hours of driving was tough. And I, I just... I want to put a stupid dunce hat on for that one because it's just, it's, it just isn't worth it. So all I can say, folks, is when you do long drives like that, really think it through. Maybe if you can rotate drivers, that would be better. But still, uh, that wasn't a smart move. But, I mean, we got home safely and everything. But I don't recommend long hauls. Give yourself six to eight hours of driving at the most and take it easy on yourself uh, life is short so uh, if you're doing you know uh, full timing and you're moving a lot and stuff like that uh, make it make this make it short uh, it's just uh, so many crazy drivers out there and you really need to be alert and when you're pulling trailers people are just stupid and they will do things and uh, slow down in front of you cut in front of you and just have no um, idea of the trouble that they could cause you. The other observation I wanted to bring up was uh, the RV itself. You know, we've been living, we lived in our RV for about 18 months before we bought our house and uh, held up great. We have a Montana uh, 3625 RE, it's a 2013, so it's not that old. Um, and the one thing I noticed when we started heading back and, and doing a long haul with it is things were falling apart not in a bad way I mean um, just like nets and bolt things like we had one vent fall off the roof because the screws came loose we had cabinet handles kind of getting loose um, just little things like that and you could tell the trailer was not on the road a lot and uh, um, thing and things were kind of loosened up so we found ourselves throughout the whole trip constantly kind of checking nuts and bolts and making sure handles were tight on uh, cabinets and things like that but all in all i mean uh, it, for our montana it's doing great and so we're really happy with that so anyway uh just be aware that um uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to grab a screwdriver phillips head flathead whatever you got um, and go around your rv and just check little things like nuts and bolts for in the strangest areas whether it's uh, fan covers up on your roof uh, check all the screws behind all your cabinets uh, they just kind of loosen up and um, uh, it's just natural I mean you're really RVs are being beaten to death when you're driving them and it's like somebody was telling me it's like sub, uh, subjecting your house to a, a 7.0 <laughs> uh, earthquake consistently till you stop so yeah keep that in mind but yeah that was the biggest thing we noticed was nuts and bolts um, getting loose um, but really uh, we're still very happy with the um, quality and the uh, durability of our Montana so I still can recommend it's a pretty good unit so yeah lessons learned on that So, using my excuses for not getting my episodes out, um, as, as soon as we got back, it seemed like one, I don't want to say disaster, but uh, issue after another seemed to come up. Uh, one is we, you know, I had to unload trailers and stuff like that, but um, some of the things that kind of held us up uh, electronic-wise was Sherry's laptop uh, kind of crashed on us, and it really set us back about a week or so, because we... Uh, that was our, and, and, and may I suggest to you guys always is if you haven't done it after this show, when you get home or whenever you get a chance, back up your main files on your laptop because uh, uh, my wife does all of our accounting and stuff like that and we uh, kind of lost a lot of that data and so we have to rebuild it all. And it's only, you know, because uh, her habits and backing up wasn't as good as it should be. I'll just put it that way. 
Anyway, so lessons learned, uh, but we had to uh, reload a computer, actually buy a new copy of Windows, had to get a new copy of QuickBooks because when we upgraded to, because uh, what kind of caused this is, is uh, Windows 10 automatically installed in our software and then it caused a lockup and then we did a recovery and the recovery uh, was a little more prompt than it should have been and it actually um, wiped out some files and uh, long story short ended up spending a lot of money in software ended up uh, uh, doing a lot of computer work for the last week and a half right after we got back so it really kind of took the uh, uh, wind out of our sails about getting uh, our episodes out on our show here so i apologize and um, wanted to kind of regroup and then and then just to make more things more complicated uh our pool <laughs> pump decided to go out and uh so we're just like just throwing money everywhere <laughs> it's like stop and then we had uh so you know and we talked about we're going to launch our boat and that's being delayed because the next module i'll tell you what's going on and uh of course and then we just have uh tomorrow when you watch uh outdoor travel channel you'll see a new video come out we had to replace a tarp <laughs> And not just any tarp, a 40 foot by 20 foot tarp replacement that we put over our boat because uh, uh, it's not from the rain. It's really more for the shade. And uh, that's the killer here in Arizona. So if you want to get kind of a, uh, amazed by the size of this giant tarp, we actually made a video of it. So that comes out tomorrow uh, if you're listening to this today the actual day that this came out uh, but yeah it's just called um, uh, boat cover replacement so yeah, just a quick little video uh, but it's just amazing how big the thing but you'll be amazed of the old tarp we had on it was one of those breathable shade tarps and it just disintegrated on us uh, the sun is just brutal so I'm not real pleased on the fact that I used a regular tarp on the boat because um, they don't breathe as well but it still protects the boat from and and, and of course the cost um, to get a I think 30 by 20 breathable shade tarp it was like hundred eighty seven dollars as opposed to a 40 by 20 that would actually cover the boat completely I got for $64 at Ace Hardware with a $10 coupon. You know me, I like my coupons. Uh, so I got it for like $58. So I was really happy with that. So anyway, uh, boat's completely covered. It'd be interesting to see how long a new tarp lasts in the Arizona sun. Uh, I My expectations is maybe six months. If I make it a whole year, I'd be amazed but yeah you just cannot believe and that's kind of justifies why my example of why we moved the RV up to Washington State yes there's more rain and things like that but the sun down here is brutal um, if you store stuff in it so um, the best way to store things here is making sure that it's under cover um, in the shade uh, the temperatures you can deal with but the the heat, um, the direct sun on your, um, I mean, if you go up in our um, Montana and like the little caps on the tanks um, that you find on the top of your, you, you'll find them almost chalky because the, the sun just eats them up, I tell you. So I was really happy to get the RV back up to Washington State. So, uh, yeah, that was kind of the reason why we haven't had a few episodes. We get kind of going with that. Um, uh, once again, I, for those of you who may have just picked up, we picked up a lot of uh, new subscribers, and we appreciate that uh, very much, and welcome aboard. Our radio show focuses mostly <laughs> on RV lifestyles, um, different kinds of lifestyles, good, bad, and ugly, um, all of it. So we uh, uh, tend to talk about how people are using their RVs and the lifestyles and I want to talk about a little bit uh, right now about some of the people we met uh, up in Fidalgo Bay uh, that were parked next to us we try to talk to people we're really busy on this trip but once again uh, I, I met a, a very interesting couple
the couple that we met that was part next to us uh i thought like, was i was kind of crazy because like a, a husband wife with two kids and and it's like oh god here we go another people trying to you know bring up kids in an rv and uh the case was, is they're actually coming up from, um, where was it? The Mississippi area. And they actually had a job opportunity up in Woodby Island. And so they're moving up there and they're using their RV for, uh, the, um, uh, and they actually had two RVs. Two, it was two families related and they couldn't be in the same RV park. So one was parked next to us and the other one was parked at another RV park a couple miles away. And it was a uh, full family. It was a uh, daughter, uh, husband set up, and then uh, it looked like their, their parents were up there too, helping them with this giant move. And so there's a good enough, uh, another example how people use their RVs as a resource or a tool to especially relocate. And so what they're doing is coming up, they had a place to live because they had their RVs. And but they were also house shopping at the same time, so they were actually looking at buying a house. Uh, but it's still amazing to me uh, how many people use an RV as a resource for accomplishing a goal. Uh, and um, most of the time, most people are using their RVs as a recreational source for snowbirding or sunbirding. Um, or retired and uh, still have a home and stuff. So that's the majority. And the minority are the ones that are kind of your gypsies, your uh, full timers, um, as, as great as you know, you watch their shows and they're actually the, the smaller percentage, but they are the ones that have the time to make the videos and the shows. And so that's why you see them the most and uh, have their unusual stories, whether traveling as a couple or maybe uh, some are traveling with children, uh, things like that. But uh, uh, they make it sound like it's, you know, everyone's doing it, but it's actually a very low percentage. Uh, so uh, once again, like I said, we focus on the RV lifestyle and I don't want... Uh, my biggest thing is because of all the video shows out there, you see, you think, oh, everybody's doing it. If you actually go to an RV park, maybe just even if you don't own an RV, go to an RV park, park, go for a walk in the park. And then those that are outside, because RVers tend to be friendly people, talk to them and say, what? Well, tell me more about your RV lifestyle. Or, and you will find all kinds of stories some people use rvs you know just because they have to they've just um, lost everything or maybe uh, they lost their spouse and they don't have the income to um, to hold up a household so maybe just living in an rv you'll find some single uh elderly people uh, will actually live in their rvs because uh, it's more affordable and still a nice accommodations but more affordable that go against pensions and and social security which aren't always uh, that big a number so yeah uh, and health issues and boy I, I can't believe how many people I've met that have tried to travel full-time after they retired and one of the spouses gets sick or passes away very common story but anyway once again focusing on the lifestyles that was another example of how people use their RVs as a resource. And uh, it's just amazing stories. And none of them are exactly the same. Um, and, and, and the big thing, I, we always want to make sure to take away that misconception of sell everything, become a minimalist, and uh, travel. <laughs> and uh, and uh, create a video channel and blog and then uh, get people to pay for it for you. <laughs> and, uh, it's not quite like that. So anyway, um, just want to keep things truthful and real with everybody. So um, once again, there's nobody that loves RVing more than me and Sherry. Um, and we really enjoy watching some of the other channels. But it gets a little irritating when I, I realize that they're, you know, they're traveling channels but they're affiliate marketing and they're also trying to you know always trying to sell you something and want you to help finance their uh, rv freedom and uh it's just not cool but anyway uh but 
there's exceptions to all that. There's some really great channels out there doing a great job, and uh, I'd be the first one to donate to them when I really see um, what I want to see. I actually, I actually only have one that I donate to, which is not an RV channel. It's actually called SV Delos, which is a uh, guys, um, a crew of people who have been actually sailing around the world. They've been making videos for over six years. Uh, great stories. Um, if you ever do watch SV Delos, I highly recommend you start from episode one and just work your way up. And the, uh, I just feel you, well, they've just done such a good job of making you feel like you're part of their family and are really uh, presenting a, a really good story. And to me, I had no trouble uh, donating some bucks to them to help them out. Um, that's rare for me and Sherry, but yeah. Uh, there is channels out there that are just doing a great job and uh, but once again RV lifestyle is different for everybody but just uh, make sure that you keep it real that um, if you're thinking about doing this RV full-time and escape the world and become a minimalist uh, uh, think it over really really well uh, because there's a lot they're not telling you So, without further ado, guess what's coming up? You just think, uh, I, I think we like to torture ourselves. But we just made arrangements to go back to Washington. With um, So, we're going to be sunbirding a lot sooner than I expected. And so, it's quite exciting because this time is more like a vacation, but there will be a little work on it. So, what happened was, we were going to launch the boat. And then uh, uh, do a couple of months worth of boat cruising videos. But uh, that's getting slid by another month. Because some good friends of ours, and we've actually had them on some of our videos. Uh, they actually own a RV repair thing. And so what they did was they, they've been saving money like crazy. And so on May 1st, they decided they wanted to go see the Northwest. Which they've never seen before. So they were going up through Utah up to Montana, through Idaho, to Washington, down to Oregon, back down to California, and then back to Arizona by October 1st. And so, and they became pretty good friends of ours, and we started having dinner with them more, and then he's done some repairs on my boat, um, on my RV before, and we actually made some videos on that. Uh, anyway, so we found out, and, and we kind of, you know, watch them on Facebook, that they are just in the outside part of Washington, which is Spokane area. And uh, started yakking with them and started brainstorming. And before you know it, it was like, well, it should be neat if you and uh, Sherry, and then they, uh, we all met at Anacortes, um, and... Um, enjoyed a few days together and we could show them a few things up in Washington and Sherry and I you know we, we kind of told you about the storage unit thing that we're kind of concerned about where we parked it and uh, you know we still spend like up to two hundred dollars in storage fees because we have the storage unit and we actually have the RV storage so anyway I got to talking with them I thought what if we went back up there Enjoyed about five days of enjoying Anacortes with our friends. And then on the last day, we rent a RV truck. RV truck. <laughs> a rental truck. <laughs> RV in the brain here. Um, and Todd, which is, um, you know, it's Todd and Lane is their name, uh, is going to help me load the truck and kind of gives me a little extra manpower because some of the things left are a little heavier. And so we're going to rent a 16-foot um, <laughs> rental truck on the last day and uh, Todd's going to help me load the rest of the stuff from the storage unit and I can actually close that storage unit saving me $135 a month and uh, then I also did some more negotiations with Sherry's folks in Central Oregon and I've um, asked you know they have five acres there and so we asked them you know it would really be nice to kind of help us save a little money uh, throughout the winter if we could move the RV down there and for free and start there, which makes it really easy for us to go up and see Sherry's folks because they're up in their 80s now and um, they definitely can't get out and about. And so it's really pleasant to be able to go up there, have a place to stay, and not have to get a motel room. And Cinder can play in their yard because it's all fenced and it's just a great opportunity. Um, so uh, 
uh, they agreed to let us move the RV down there for free. So we'll get rid of uh, $63 a month there. <clears throat> so basically, we're going to save ourselves about $200 a month. Uh, of course, it'll take a little while to redeem that after renting a truck and going up there and stuff. But um, it'll take a little pressure off the monthly bills. And so it was kind of a good deal. So we're going to go back up to Washington, spend some quality time up in Anacortes, which will will film actually some of the uh, tours and stuff. We're thinking about going whale watching, uh, and take you on some Washington ferry rides, go see Port Townsend, um, go see Washington Park. It's just a lot of really pretty things up there in Washington uh, that we uh, would love to film and uh, actually have some other folks to help us with the filming. So, yeah, it'd be kind of neat. And then um, after we leave Central Oregon, we just go back down to... Uh, Arizona once again and then the following month in August is when we'll launch the boat and uh, now we're kind of thinking I'm not sure if we're going to put it in Lake Powell we might put it in Lake Sororo because we're getting so late in the year because um, we really want to get some fishing uh, videos done and so uh, uh, those actually should be quite humorous <laughs> because I've never really fished the lakes down here I've learned all about it but to do the real thing is a whole nother you know it's one thing to see it to actually do it is <laughs> going to be humorous i bet so yeah so we got a 10-day trip uh, um, when this show comes out that week i'm leaving um ahead of sherry so me and cinder are going to drive up for three days and sherry's going to fly up to bellingham washington and i'm going to pick her up so she gets to enjoy more time vacationing instead of being driving with me and so I'll pick her up. So I'll leave like a Wednesday. I'll be up there by a Friday night. Pick her up at midnight. She got a pretty good deal to fly up there. And enjoy five days with our friends. And so, yeah, it'll be kind of fun. Um, not pulling an RV up there. It's just me. Uh, the only problem we always have is when we do this, I always have to take the canopy off the truck, which weighs a ton. And, uh, of course, everybody hates me when I say, Can you come over and help me take off my canopy? Anyway, but, um, yeah, um, the trailer hitch is actually up in Washington. I left it in the storage thing there, so I don't have to worry about putting that on until I get up there. And uh, so, yeah, that's the biggest inconvenience is the drive for me um, and uh, me and Cinder. And um, the reason we do it that way is because we don't want to leave Cinder in a dog um, motel or anything. Cause, um, I don't know, it just seems mean. And it's kind of pricey too. It costs us about fifty bucks, forty-five dollars a day to take Cinder to a dog resort down here, and so uh, I'd rather have Cinder with us. And so it's it's worth it. So that's the new plan coming up. So lots of things going on, and hard to keep up. And you can see why it's been a little hard to get a radio show out. And it's going to be hard to do a radio show when we do that one too, because it's just uh, we do our best, but I my podcast equipment is is big and bulky big microphones all that stuff and so when i go on the road i i hate doing a show with such poor microphones and stuff it doesn't sound as well and, and um we actually get comments about that so anyway um uh, i may skip an episode or a week for the next episode just so we can keep our sound quality up and so anyway just be understanding that we got a lot of stuff going on and of course every time we do these um, trips we always run into new RV stories that are just amazing and I'm sure that's gonna happen again so stay tuned for that and this is our reminder time to thank you very much for listening that we are sponsored by goodmusicradio.com which is a internet radio station that we actually own and uh it has been growing very well but it's really cool because you can take it anywhere you go and it doesn't matter what state you're in uh it just i think you can even listen to us in several countries but basically uh, you can listen to us on your smart tv your cell phone your pc uh, it's all free there's no cost and uh, it's all just really good music past and present uh, greatest hit stuff and uh, very little talk very, and very little commercials it's just good music and so you don't have to hear all the talk 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 and 
buzzy sounds and all that stuff. It's just good music. And every time you listen to it, you just go, man, I haven't heard that one in a while. That's a good tune. And so you get a chance, go to goodmusicradio.com. You can download the free app on your uh, cell phone, or you can listen to us on your PC. And you just pull it up, hit, click play, minimize it, and enjoy the show. And if you have a smart TV, we just made a video about it. Um, you can easily listen to us on your smart TV. Just go to your web browser part, type in RV to, um, <laughs> goodmusicradio.com, and uh, hit the play button, and you have music for the living room. So, yeah, it's just good tunes. I promise you, you will like the music. And so I urge you, please write this down, goodmusicradio.com. It's free. It's an internet radio. Uh, if you put it on your cell phone and use our free app, you just turn it on and it comes on automatically. And if you have a newer car, you can use your auxiliary jack and just plug right into your uh, phone, uh, your phone right into your uh, uh, entertainment system in your car. And there you go. Great tunes, not noisy, not a bunch of bells and whistles. It's just music. And uh, uh, it's great stuff. So anyway, check it out, goodmusicradio.com. The other thing I want to remind you is if you're listening to the video version of this, this is an actual podcast on iTunes. And if you don't have podcast software, that's free too. And if you just go to Google Play and you just uh, type in uh, podcast software, we use um, my favorites, Podcast Addict, and uh, you just download that. Uh, if you go to the actual site of RV Talk Radio, uh, you'll see a link there where you can download uh, uh the podcast software there too but anyway um it's free it makes it really easy to listen to our podcast and any other podcast you must uh, like there's thousands of them out there and so i uh, just want to always make sure we put a little bit of a module in our show to remind people that podcasts are can be very easy to listen to you uh, some people do it uh, what some people just like to listen to our video version and that's why we make that. Uh, you'll notice we don't get a lot of traffic on those because uh, they're actually radio shows. So um, <clears throat> anyway, but our podcast, when you look, you can't see it, but we have a very, uh, very large following. We very m much appreciate every one of you. So thank you so much. But um, once again, if you're new to podcasting, get yourself some podcast software. If you like internet radio and you like good music, um, uh, past and present, um, greatest hits kind of stuff, go to goodmusicradio.com. So I'd like to talk a little bit about Cinder, our dog, in traveling. And some of the things uh, you need to consider if you decide to do full timing or even just sunbirding and stuff like that is, uh, for example, it's really hot in Arizona. So uh, even in the winter, there's times where uh, you just can't keep your car, or <laughs> your dog in a car. Uh, they'll, they'll get overheated. So what happens with us, for example, when we went to Washington last week and a half, um, I have to make sure that everything we do from Arizona all the way up to pretty much uh, Reno area, uh, till it started cooling down that any activity anything we do any stops we make anytime we eat it's got to include cinder because it's just too warm to leave them in a car and so uh, uh, the only benefit when I have the RV with us is if we're in a hot place and we can go to an uh, I have to make sure and go to an RV park where we have power and I can actually, you know, have air conditioners on and stuff. And Cinder stays in the RV just fine. But you really need to consider uh, your pet all the time uh, when you're traveling with a pet. Um, and think ahead of your scenario. So if you're coming down from Oregon or some other states that are cooler and coming down to Arizona, you need to realize that your habits that you may have up in the north uh, where you can just stop... Uh, get out of the car, leave the dog in the car, go in and buy a few groceries or something like that. Cannot happen in a place like Arizona. Um, if It's always easier when you have a partner. Now, if you're alone, for example, when I drive up to Washington next week, me and Cinder will be alone. So anything and everything I do, uh, I have to think through very carefully. Um, 
when it comes to stopping to get some food, stopping to get some, you know, a pop or something from at a gas station, if i am uh, got all my windows, let's say it's 90 degrees, uh, I can open all the windows at a gas station that may be covered and shaded, run in and get a soda pop or something like that, and come back out and cinders just fine. Um, but any more than five minutes like that is 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 pretty much the max of what I can possibly even consider. And of course, when I'm traveling and I got to use motels, I got to find motels that are pet friendly. So, for example, when we I leave Arizona, I'm going to try to drive all the way up to Fallon or um, Nevada, long drive, but uh, they have a great motel there that's affordable and allows pets. And so, yeah, and then the other thing is, it's amazing how well Cinder does on long hauls. I just, she gets a little finicky once in a while, but if you watch her videos, you'll see she just lays back and uh, goes into sleep mode and she's kind of got it down. And it's funny when I get to areas that she recognizes, she actually perks up and goes, I recognize those smells. I know where I'm at. And so, uh, um, and of course, the other thing when I'm traveling and Sherry and I are together with Cinder, I have to keep a supply, you know, a supply of water for her, and I just use the bottled water. I've got to keep food for her. Uh, if we're doing a long, you know, eight hour or something like that, uh, Cinder's dinner time is usually around four. I have to find a place to pull over, and she likes a wet food, a can of wet food, and that's the food that she'll eat completely. If I give her dried food, she just nibbles. And so uh, I literally have to take time around four or five o'clock to give her time to eat. And uh, when four o'clock comes, I swear to God, that dog wears a watch. She knows when it's time to eat. So anyway, big things to consider about traveling with a pet. Always think ahead, plan ahead. Uh, no exception with uh, Cinder. Uh, we plan well. We always think about her health and fitness and safety all the time uh, but this warm weather can really be an issue um, when it comes to protecting your animals so keep that in mind when you're RVing so I'm gonna talk about something I don't usually talk about is the RV freedom boat freedom sailing freedom uh, and if you're young and have a chance to do it, why you should. <laughs> I know he's like, Rob, you usually give him a hard time. And, and I do. And, the, and for example, I like to watch Gone with the Winds um, and S.V. Delos um, because uh, we love boating and all, all that kind of stuff. And But the difference between us and them is age. <laughs> so... Um, and I got to tell you, throughout the years of my life of doing things like that, like Sherry and I used to be on a kite team for Cutting Edge Kites. We used to own a kite stores and stuff. And we did a traveling circuit where we actually competed and stuff. And it was a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and it was quite the sacrifice. And a lot of people say we're stupid. Um, and then we had a chance to full-time RV in 2006, and we did that for a while. And we had a second time to got to do it. Do I regret any of them? Absolutely not. Um, if uh, I, I find it amazing, I, I I've been watching Tet Tetramania, I think they call themselves, and uh, which they just bought a forty-four foot powerboat, and uh, I think they paid around one hundred and eighty, ninety thousand dollars for the boat. Plus, they got the repairs, which cost a fortune. And, the, and fuel cost, uh, you can't imagine, um, say, a 250-gallon uh, gas tank to support two engines or something like that. Can you imagine filling that up at $3 a gallon? <clears throat> and I watched the winds, and I, and I, I, I still uh, mystifies me of how they can afford it. I, I don't know all the answers to that i have a sneaking suspicion on some of it and i got a feeling there's a lot of credit involved here and there too but what's the difference between that and say you know maybe you've already done it and you've got your degree or maybe you have a, a student loan what's the difference between investing in yourself like that than a student loan type thing where you get in debt and do that but you know as you get older 
you're least likely to do some of that stuff. So yeah, you may be paying for it 10 years later after you're done doing it, but was it worth it? Oh uh, yeah. And just like paying for a degree and having a student loan, was it worth it? Um, so, not in all cases, but most cases, yeah. Um, getting your degree is a good thing. Um, and the other thing I wanted to kind of uh, bring up, and I'll bring it up again because I had a comment that, that, that kind of just spoofed me, is I have, a I think, episode 51, 55 or something like that. I had a comment come in about, because I was saying, you know, if you go to this work camping stuff, which works out great, but it's going to be minimal wage. And a lot of times it's trading time or getting a free place to park your RV in exchange for doing some work and stuff. And if you're like Sherry and I, we have some pre-existing income and stuff. So, hey, you know, if I put in 20 hours at an RV park and I get free uh, RV space, that's a good deal for me and Sherry. And uh, and it's a chance to meet people and stuff. It's It's, it's good for our livelihood. So no big deal. But if you think about that stuff, doing it as a living to sustain your lifestyles for, for RVing or boating or something, um, I don't recommend it. Um, it's a lot of times seasonal too. It um, can save you money, but do you always want to live in poverty <laughs> all the time just for your freedom? So I, you know, that's just one thing to look at. However, when you're young and and crazy and and can sleep on the ground and things like that, and and um, you're more flexible, uh, yeah, it's worth it. So I I don't want to get the wrong people the wrong idea that I don't support these young folks that are going out and doing this van life and all that stuff. I, I understand it. Uh, the problem with it is once you get the traveling bug. It's hard to shake and it'll always be in the back of your mind. And it's really hard to come off the road and settle down. Like I have a family or buy a house or pursue a career or something like that. So definitely need to consider that. <clears throat> but, uh, um, but I sure get mystified sometimes of where this money comes from. And um, <laughs> I really love to get the real story, uh, which you'll never get. Uh, there is other folks I've seen out there that were actually inherited money and stuff and had the opportunity to travel and stuff and and that was great and uh, and good for them but uh, that explains how they were able to do it but yeah money's a big deal insurance is a big deal and you always hear me belly aching about health insurance and if you aren't involved in what you're hearing on the news you're probably getting a little more educated about what health care is all about and what a big issue it is <clears throat> so anyway for those that have the opportunity to able to travel and stuff and you're young and you have a window of opportunity only even if you can only do it for a year or two um, you'll never regret it you'll, you'll, you'll have memories that you'll never forget and as you get older those memories are really important to you so uh, yeah there's nothing wrong with trying to do this stuff before it's time <laughs> when I say retirement um, but yeah, and, and I still find it amazing is like, especially these boating people is when you have work done on your boats and stuff like that, it's really expensive. And so I, I'd really love to know the real numbers and really the sacrifices they are making to maintain some of these boats. Uh, it's not cheap. I have a boat, you know, I talk about boats. I know about boats. And I certainly don't have a bo uh, boat as big as some of the ones I've seen on those two channels. And uh, it's got to be a pretty penny. And I got a feeling some of it's caught some, you know, could have caught them off guard and probably didn't know. Um, but, uh, I mean, there's, if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> so if you're going to do it bad enough, you'll find a way to do it. So, And sometimes some great bartering and stuff like that comes in handy too. So... Anyway, hats off to the people that have the chance to do RV freedom, boating freedom, hiking freedom, travel freedom, all that stuff's good, and it's wonderful if you can do it. Um, I worry about when there's children involved, but at the same time, um, uh, age is a big deal. A lot of times if you have kids before they go into school and travel for a while, that's cool, and then uh, settle down when they start schooling. Uh, you know, but that's all the way of thinking too, but anyway... 
travel freedom if you get the chance to do it live a little bit of minimalist life um, live uh, what you know understanding that you can keep a tight budget try to stay out of debt and go for it you'll never regret it I can guarantee you that Well, that's all the time I got this week for RV Talk Radio. I want to thank you very much for listening. We always appreciate you folks listening and giving us feedback. I do want to uh, always ask you if you get a chance to leave comments. If you have something tonight, you know, nasty to say, uh, just be professional about it, and then we'll try to respond with something positive. Anyway, um, uh, but most of the time we're always getting really nice stuff, and we appreciate it, and we love um, having you. Listen to us when we uh, get our episodes out. Having a little trouble this summer with all the things going on. Uh, I'll probably skip one week um, on this show because we're going to be traveling to Washington. And once again, I always worry about the sound. And then we'll get back to our schedule again. So thank you so much for listening. I hope if you ever get the opportunity to be an RVer or just travel or even a boater, um, uh, always thumbs up to you we really hope that you can do it. It, it you'll have memories you can never take memories away so that's a good thing so all right be safe out there thanks for listening see you next week bye now hey thanks for listening to rv talk radio please take the time to subscribe and listen to some of our prior shows thanks again and be safe bye now